We conduct fuels inventories to estimate the amount of biomass within the ecosystem. And biomass is important for predicting a lot of things, but in the case of the Brown's planar transect, it's specifically designed to estimate uh, biomass related to fuels and fire behavior. So what the planar transect is, is it's similar to the line transect, where we've stretched out a 75 foot survey tape, but it's different because we're surveying everything that's intersected by a plane. And so for two meters above this tape, we're gonna survey everything that intercepts it. So what are we, we measuring? We're gonna estimate the biomass of three or four different size classes of fuels, uh, and we're gonna also estimate duff and litter. And again, all these are important for estimating uh, how fast a fire spreads, as well as its effect on the ecosystem. So there's three size classes uh, that we'll focus on that are considered fine woody debris. So everything less than three inches in diameter is really important for predicting how fast a fire will spread. You can imagine we've all built a campfire. When you're building a campfire, you grab a lot of grass and these small diameter twigs because they're easy to light and they're easy to get going. And then you add larger and larger pieces of material. And the last thing you add is that big diameter log. So those big logs don't really contribute to how fast the fire builds, but they do uh, affect the severity. So these three different size classes of fine woody debris are one hour or everything that's less than a quarter inch in diameter. There's also 10 hour fuels, which are everything from one inch in diameter down to a quarter inch in diameter. And then there's 100 hour fuels, which are everything from three inches in diameter down to one inch in diameter. So why do we call them uh, one, 10 and 100 hour fuels uh, when they're different sizes? Well, the, the time that we're referring to is the time that it takes for moisture in the atmosphere to come to equilibrium with the amount of moisture inside the fuel. And so it takes a, approximately 100 hours or four or five days. Uh, so a series of rain events uh, might make this fuel saturated and not available to burn. Uh, conversely, five days of really hot, dry weather will dry this out about as dry as it can get. Now at the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got this one hour fuel, which if a rainstorm comes, it'll get saturated in an hour, but if the sun comes out and it gets hot and dry, it'll be as dry as it can get in an hour. So again, those are important fire behavior uh, variables. So that's why we're measuring the biomass in these different size classes. Eventually, we're gonna take that data and we're gonna model fire behavior. Okay, so there's several steps to this process. The first thing we're gonna do is estimate the number of fine woody debris particles that we encounter along this planar transect. So we're gonna start our measurements uh, for one and 10 hour fuels at 15 meters along the transect. And we're only gonna measure until 21 meters or feet along the transect. So, the reason we do that is there's a whole bunch of twigs and sticks here if we, and they tend to be a lot more of these fine, smaller particles than there are of the bigger particles. So we can get a good estimate just in a short distance. If we were to do the whole length of the transect, it would take a lot more time. And we wouldn't necessarily get a more accurate estimate for our purposes. Uh, so we'll start with just these one and 10 hour fuels. Now a quick way to just count the number of them that we encounter in this planar transect is to use what's called a go-no-go -no -go gauge. Now this one I've made out of an old hotel key card, uh, but you can buy them online. They're about 15 bucks. They're made out of aluminum. Um, but more or less all go-no-go -no -go cards have are these little notches. So this notch along the top uh, is a quarter inch wide. 
And if I take that notch and I slide it over a one hour fuel, it fits quite nicely. Now, uh, if I try to fit that same uh, gauge over a 10 hour fuel or a 100 hour fuel, obviously it's not gonna fit. But that next gauge size, which is the one inch, can easily slide over that uh, particle size. And then the 100 hour fuels, that three inch particle size class, uh, anything that is the width or less than the card from here to here is in that uh, 100 hour fuel size class. So I'm gonna start with the one and the 10 hour fuels. And all I'm gonna do is count the number of them that I encounter in this planar transect. So uh, right here, right below the tape, and again, so that planar transect, you can imagine if I were to take a chainsaw, imagine that I own this side of the fence and I want to build a fence. If I take a chainsaw and I just remove everything from this side, what I'm doing is I'm measuring every particle where it reaches this tape, where it reaches the plane. Uh, so you can just imagine a slice through here. So let's see how this, this works. There's a whole bunch of these one hour fuels and 10 hour fuels. So there's, uh, that's not a one hour, that is a, clearly a 10 hour fuel. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm staying right above the line here, seven, eight, nine. So I've already got nine 10 hour fuels. So you can imagine um, it, it took me a little bit of time to get that far. So I'm only going to 21 feet to save time. If I do the one hour fuels, it's gonna be even longer. So uh, here, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm up to 16 and I haven't even gone a foot. So you can see the density of those small one hour fuels is much higher than the 10 hour fuels. So once I get to 21 feet, I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna measure those 100 hour fuels. So those are, again, are the particles that are three inches and above, or three inches down to one inch. Um, so I'm gonna do that same thing. And here, as I go along, uh, I've got one 100 hour fuel right here, and that's within the first couple of feet. Um, two, Three. So you can see there's, there's fewer of those large diameter fuels just by the abundance that they are in, in the ecosystem. So I'm gonna do that measurement all the way up to 30 meters because I'm less likely to encounter those bigger size classes. Okay, so the next step is to measure the coarse woody debris along our planar transect. And remember coarse woody debris or thousand hour fuels are anything that's over that three inches in diameter. Uh, so because they're less frequent, we're gonna measure the coarse woody debris from 15 feet along our transect all the way to the end, which is 75 feet. Uh, because there's so much variation in the size of those coarse woody debris particles, we're gonna measure each particle individually. We're gonna take its diameter and we're gonna also test it uh, for how sound it is. And we're gonna give it a, a decay class number, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, so let's get started. So here I am at 15 feet. Now remember this one, this log was in that 100 hour fuel class, but there's one directly below it uh, that we're gonna take a slice through. So I've got a logger's tape. Now the cool thing about this logger's tape is on one side, it has inches and feet. And on the other side, it's been calibrated to measure the diameter. So when I flip this into a loop, the reading that I get on this side of it tells me that it's actually three inches in diameter from here to here. So it's a handy little tool in the field. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this first coarse woody debris particle. I'm gonna wrap the tape 
around. These tapes are notorious for getting bound up. So you kind of finesse it and you're careful with it. Now where the lines line up, uh, this is 3.8 inches in diameter. And again, the logger's tape has tenths of inches marked uh, instead of the normal units. Um, so there's one. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to crawl through uh, this big nasty pile of slash and really get in there and wrap my arm around and measure this larger coarse woody debris. Um, and I'm gonna do that all the way to the end of the transect. Now these big debris particles, we're measuring them not to estimate fire behavior, but more because of fire effects. When these big suckers burn, they burn hot, and if it's dry, they'll burn long. And that hot, uh, smoldering fire can actually sterilize the soil um, and uh, lead to some negative fire effects that we don't want. So we wanna know how much of this is here. Um, this is also important for wildlife habitat. Nesting birds and things will hide uh, their nests underneath these things. Newts will live inside rotten logs. Um, so these are very important. So each time you measure one of these large coarse woody debris particles, here I've got that larger log. It's uh, about 14 and a half inches in diameter. Along with that diameter measurement, we're also gonna assign it to a decay class. So decay class number one is more or less a freshly fallen tree. It might still have and probably still has the red needles on it. Uh, and the bark is very much intact. It looks like, a, like you could have just cut it down. Now decay class two, the, the log and everything connected to it is starting to lose these fine twigs, these 10 hour and uh, one hour fuels. They're starting to fall off. And another key characteristic is that it's got this flaky bark that is starting to fall off. So this tells me this is decay class two. So let's take a look at a couple of other uh, logs along here that are in decay class three, four, and five. So decay class three is now most of the bark is missing, but if I tap on it, it's still really sound. The difference between decay class number three and decay class four, now this one does have a lot of bark, but it's really rotten and the center of the log is starting to rot. The last one, decay class five, is right here. The very last decay class is number five. And so here we have an aspen log that is all but rotted out. I can even peel it apart. There's all kinds of good organic matter and rot in there. Uh, and this is all but turned into soil. If I kick it, it's really rotten. It's this rich organic matter coming from these rotting logs that is really critical for nutrient cycling, for protecting the soil, and the productivity of these forest ecosystems. So the last thing we're gonna measure is duff and litter. So litter is anything on the forest floor that's recognizable as organic matter. So here I've got a whole bunch of pine needles. There's some pine cones. There's a little bit of grass. There are some one hour uh, fuels, these twigs that are less than a quarter inch. They're all recognizable and that's the litter. Below the litter is the duff and the duff is more or less uh, organic matter that is really broken down. It's the litter at the next stage of decomposition. So if I pull out some duff, you see uh, it's much darker and, and it's not really recognizable. There's a little bit of litter mixed in there. Uh, once I dig down far enough, I'm gonna hit mineral soil. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll take my 12 inch ruler, I'll put it at the top of the mineral soil and I'll measure up to the bottom of the, the duff. And in this case, it looks like we've got three and a half inches of duff. And then I'll measure to the top of the litter and that's five and a half inches. So I take the difference of those two, 
and that tells me the litter is two inches deep and the duff was three and a half. So I'll do that at 75 feet and I'll do it at 45 feet along the transect. And that's it for uh, Brown's planar transect. We're gonna take our data back to the lab. Uh, we can't just crunch these numbers in the field. What Brown did in 1974, he published a paper that basically derived a bunch of equations. So now we're gonna take those, uh, the count of the number of particles we found in different size classes, and we're gonna take the actual measurements of the coarse woody debris, and we're gonna run them through a model, and that model will estimate how much uh, fuel we have at this site.